my name is Randall Pedro. Um, I've been at the prep for 30 years now, and I am now the director of diversity, equity, and inclusion, but I also teach in the religious studies department. Wonderful. Uh, my name is Craig Smith, and this is my seventh year at Fordham Prep. And uh, I'm the assistant director of diversity, equity, and inclusion, as well as a member of campus ministry and a teacher in the religious studies department. Well, when we talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion, and my role as director, I'd like you to know that we've been doing this work, but it's been a title change. And to me, the title change is a recognition that this is a collective school-wide effort. And Craig and myself are working together to bring this community together to celebrate diversity. Because to me, diversity is about the valuation of every individual in the building. And I feel that it's everyone's responsibility, not our responsibility as the Department of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion to be a part of that mission. And I think it's important for us to uh, model working together. So that's, I think, value for us, is that we um, appreciate one another and we work closely together. We never have an opportunity that's uh, what's going on here, we don't know what's going on. So I think it's also, since there are two of us in the job, it helps us really model the expectation of the community or the value of the community, that there, there are conversations to be had. And it's a, it, there are many voices. Um, to include in the conversation. So we always include each other's voices. Uh, always, and we check always. in with each other all the time. And I think that's really important for us to model and also helps the work kind of feel that we're in it, um, that we can be together in the work because it can feel somewhat isolating or overwhelming sometimes. And, and I'd also like to say that we have a community of people, like you're here talking with Craig and I, mm -hmm. but there's a whole community of people that we work with whose voices are very important and instrumental in this work. Um, we have a diversity committee made up of faculty members who are just as invested as we are. And our whole job is to build that synergy and bring it out to the whole community. Well, um, a, a great starting point, and you know, actually a key member of our team isn't here right now, uh, that's Mr. Carney, um, who kind of directs this whole initiative bringing all aspects of our programs together, um, we're forming a task force made up of different individuals and constituents in the community, members from the Board of Trustees, faculty, staff, and even a couple of students and parents to come together to look at each of those initiatives and to form teams to A, to look and see what the best practices are around in our different Jesuit communities, then to make recommendations on how we can implement those different aspects of the DEI plan in our community effectively. So yes, it is extensive, but we're doing extensive work with it. And as I said before, this is how we're gonna bring more people into the fold because while it is extensive, it is attainable and can be done if properly planned. And I am so proud of the effort that we're making so far to bring that to fruition. Because in my mind, I think I see us completing this within two or three years. But bringing the ideas and thoughts that are mentioned there to a real palpable, manageable plan within this school year. So yes, it is extensive, it is a challenge, but that's what Jesuit schools are about. We're about facing challenges because Fordham Prep is just a microcosm of the world. Mm -hmm. And it's our responsibility, as John Lewis said, to do the work that brings good trouble. So if it's bringing good trouble to me in the sense that it's a burden of work, I'm happy for it. And given the restrictions of this year, I think it's important to point out we're not really missing a beat in a lot of ways. We're reasonable with the restrictions on gathering people and and um, time to have large events. Um, we're just reimagining those in a lot of ways. We're really considering, you know, um, technology helps and, and we have time to, to really meet still and to, and to include everyone. So um, despite there are some challenges there's this year that uh, I, we're not naive to, um, but reasonably speaking, we're really not 
missing too much despite the fact that this year is a unique near year in a lot of other ways um, beyond diversity equity inclusion of course with the with the pandemic and things like that so I think that it's aligned I mean terrifically with the mission of the school I think it is the mission of the school you know a lot of people forget when you look at the Gospels Jesus could have just came down and told us exactly what it is that the Father wants of us. But he realized that you have to contextualize messages. So we have the parables, which were stories that help people to understand what it means to love your brother. And that diversity, equity, and inclusion is just another language added to our Jesuit language and tradition to help us better be who we are supposed to be, men for others. Well. How could you be a man for others, but not care about those who are in distress in your community? And when I say the word community, community extends to this building. Community is outside this building. Community is the world that we belong to. And we're supposed to be the ones to learn, to be educated, to understand our spiritual role, and then to go out and set the world on fire. And I just see myself is helping people have another lens, a different critical lens, to understand this Jesuit mission. And diversity, equity, inclusion, the language lines up terrifically with what we're supposed to do. Yeah, and the, and the Society of Jesus has these apostolic preferences, and we're supposed to really consider, walk with the marginalized, consider those who are most in need in our world. And um, this is the need. I mean, this is a major need uh, historically, but also right now at this precise moment, it's a huge need. Um, last year, we had Father Greg Boyle of the Jesuits um, speak, and he's wonderful. And this one thought he is consistent in his work is always we belong to each other. Um, we're here for one another. We're, and some, we, the only thing that happens when negative, terrible things happen is because we forget that. We forget that we belong to each other. So um, I think the work we're doing here is to try to expand that, break it open, reimagine it in a way, in a specific context that really, really helps. Um, but it also helps because it's the profound need right now. And when we talk about compassion and learning true compassion, I think diversity is about that compassion because compassion actually in its true definition means that you know no other and that you're called to action as if this is my brother here. Not my figurative brother, but my real brother. And you're my brother. And everyone out there is my brothers and sisters. And we're all called to action. Because anyone who feels that they cannot improve or that they're above critique, you've already failed. We all can be better. I myself can be better. And that's why I need everyone in the community to help challenge me to become the man that I need to be to make a difference in this world. And the same for each of us. It's not an easy question to consider because I think so often people want, um, right now, they want results quickly and immediately and measurable in um, moments. You know, we're so accustomed to like um, things being achieved quickly or, or, you know, cell phones, technology, all these things are so fast. So I think the first thing is a balance of the tension of patience and knowing that this takes a while and it takes a community to really transform itself, but at the same time, uh, impatience, uh, not being, uh, you know, satisfied with the status quo and, and, and constantly trying that kind of magis stuff, you know, like going for more all the time, always the big, keep, keep, keep going. So um, whenever I assess any needs in my own life or in my work, I always look at long term and short term. Uh, what can I do now and what can I hope for in the future? And hopefully you'll build enough short term goals that they equate to, you know, big, big long term achievements. Um, but for now, what can we do specifically is be patient with ourselves and with those in our community so that we can uh, enter into the conversation authentically with and for one another, but be impatient so that we can keep insisting upon uh, people listening. Uh, it's hard to imagine, this is another thing that's come up with you know, the pandemic, that we have to explain to people that we need to care for one another. We have to. And so these are the kind of small hallmarks of progress. We, care, we, we, care, we belong to each other, we care for one another, and this is what we're here to do. Um, so that's the beginning, care. 
just care about it. Care about each other and care about uh, yourself. And then uh, we'll build a whole bunch of small picture uh, experiences that will lead into uh, big picture goals. Yeah, and, and to take this out of, I like to call it the world of dichotomies, of seeing this is right or wrong. Um, I think Craig is totally right when he says it's about care. And the way that we can show care to each other is to listen to each other. Um, and not to listen with an ear where you're trying to figure out okay, is this right? But to listen with compassion, to listen to hear this person's story. You know, I'm always amazed when people talk, and some people feel that diversity is about sharing stories of suffering. And it's not. It's not actually. It's about celebrating one another. And sometimes in that celebration, we have to talk about the times that were difficult. And I think the mistake that we make many times is to say, for instance, if you look at the suffering that the Jews have gone through, and you compare that with the suffering of Native Americans, you've already made a mistake. Instead of comparing, listen to this person's story. Be there with them in that moment. Be there with them in that time. And if you can do that, you're a diversity pro already. <laughs> Well, um, yesterday I had an interesting experience. Um, as you know, that we have a temporary lunch staff downstairs, and I was able to have a conversation with one of the new people. And something that he brought out was that he thought and was amazed by the diversity in the building. And I think sometimes our challenge is that we believe that getting people here and having different constituents in the community is diversity. And that's actually not diversity. Getting people here is not the goal. The goal is making sure that people have valuable experiences here and that we have to listen to those stories that sometimes may challenge our community. The stories sometimes we don't want to hear. Like we want to hear that everyone had a great time, the prep was wonderful. But for me, I want to hear the but. I want to hear where were the areas you think we could have done better? And this goes back to my point before, self-examination. Not to be afraid of those moments of self-examination from the students. And to take those stories and not to call them outliers, but a reflection of our community. And we can't be scared to look at that reflection. And sometimes, you know, I mean, shaving this morning, I cut my face knowing we were doing this video, and I was hoping you'll shoot my good side. <laughs> but what I realized is that blemish is a part of me. It's a part of who I am today. And I can heal. And that we can heal as a community if we listen to those stories. If we, we take those outliers and we make them a part of us. Because if you do that, then everyone does feel valued. Because they know that their story matters not the entire prep story. And the good news is I think people trust the community enough to know that that's a value of the community. Mm -hmm. So that when we're saying all these wonderful things, but it's not because we don't trust that the but's gonna make a difference. But that in pointing out an area of growth means people here care about that. And that, it, it, that it'll be taken seriously. Um, I do think that having voices present is the first step, so I don't want to diminish that by um, saying that, but, but keeping those voices heard is the long-term step, and it's much more challenging. Uh, to have somebody in the building or have somebody in the community is great, and it's absolutely necessary. To keep their, them feeling welcome to have a voice is, is a long-term and, and then I think a lot of times people forget about what it means to be equitable. Um, we want to make sure that we're always equitable. I believe that every person that works here at the prep is a wonderful person and that they're fair and that they're thoughtful. But sometimes the mistake is we think being fair and thoughtful is enough. And sometimes we have to think about equity and what equity means, that people have different starting points. And once again, this goes back to our Jesuit principles of meeting people where they are. So that equity is about understanding that we all don't have the same view, we all don't have the same starting point, and that we have to be aware of the challenges that are created by this inequity of individuals in our community. 
because while we have parents and families who are very affluent, there are people who struggle with food insecurity in this community. Many times we talk about the food drive when we're doing it for people outside our community, but there are people within this community, right here, who struggle. So we have to remember that, and we, we need to be cognizant of that. Um, I, I hope that this conversation is able to inspire people, and, and even if it doesn't inspire you, but leads you to thought and reflection, and you wanted to be a part of this diversity experience, we're starting a new program where we're going to have an open door, have a little pizza, sit down together as a community, just to chat about some of these issues, nothing formal. And we'll let you know more information about that program. Um, uh, we'll like to call it our open door program. Uh, but we also have a diversity alliance, which is made up of students. So if you're interested in joining the diversity alliance, please see Mr. Smith and myself, and we'll make sure that you can become a member. And if you're an adult in our community, we're hoping to hold diversity dialogues for our families where they can talk about their issues of diversity, as well as alumni. There's right now a group of alumni who are meeting who are putting together a mentoring program and we're looking to expand diversity and get the insight of alumni. So as you can see, this summer we've been busy uh -huh. building a broad coalition and if you feel you want to be a part of it, don't watch us. Be with us.